uh, very good evening to all uh, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So we thank our Lord and our Savior for giving yet another opportunity to study about his wonderful words. And uh, last week we studied uh, many important uh, points regarding uh, three world. Uh, the third world uh, we have studied how the third world uh, is the kingdom of Christ that is going to be established on earth. And Brother Gopal has also revised it uh, in Nepali language. So today we are going to see uh, another uh, important uh, topic uh, from the Bible. And that uh, is, uh, you see, uh, one of the verses which uh, our Christ spoke. So let us read that verse, Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Interway in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Very good. So here, Jesus speaks about, uh, you see, a straight gate and a broad gate. So he speaks about uh, two ways here. So, Jesus tells uh, that there is a broad way and there is a narrow way. So, he says that uh, there is a broad way that uh, leads to destruction and the narrow way leads to life. So, dear brethren, uh, so these are the two ways uh, that is before mankind. And they have to choose in which way they have to walk. So, generally, everybody thinks that uh, as on um, uh, regarding this uh, broad way and narrow way that they have to choose it after death. So that once a man dies, his soul uh, will be going uh, on the way to heaven or hell. And that is the time that uh, he will be, uh, you see, need to take a decision on which way to walk, either on the broad way or on the narrow way. But if you see this verse, Jesus is did not tell uh, these words to any dead people in this world. You see, he was telling to the living people. So this is applicable to the people who are living now. And this uh, way has to be chosen when someone is alive in this world. So he says there is a broad way and there is a narrow way. So where does the broad way go to? Can anybody tell me? Where does the broad way go to? And where does the narrow way go to? Anybody? In. To the life. Yeah. Okay. Broadway? What about the Broadway? Yeah. Hmm. Tell me, brother. Tell me, Joel, brother. Huh. Maybe hell. Maybe hell. Okay, good. So generally, that is the thought. Everybody, you see, as soon as they read this verse, immediately they picturize in the mind that uh, Broadway will go to hell and the narrow way will go to heaven. But if you read that verse carefully, Jesus never mentioned a word about hell or heaven there. But he rather says that the Broadway goes to destruction and the narrow way goes to life. So today we're going to see what is that uh, destruction which the broad way leads to and what is the life that the uh, narrow way leads to. Here, the destruction mentioned about the broad way, is it uh, speaking about the financial destruction? Is it uh, speaking about an accident some uh, person faces in his life? Uh, and uh, is, uh, you see, handicapped? Or is he speaking about the educational failure? Or uh, is he speaking about the very old age problems? Or is he speaking about some uh, drastic health issues or love failure or marriage failure? None of this, dear brethren. This is speaking about none of this, uh, uh, you see, distractions. Uh, because the verse clearly tells that the broad way leads to destruction. That means the end of that way is uh, destruction. So, 
if you think and if you see which is the end in everybody's life if you see that is death so death you see is the end in everybody's life therefore this broadway goes to destruction means destruction completely in death let us read proverbs 14 12 brother can anybody read brother proverbs 14 12 brother there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death very good see there is a way that seemeth right unto man that's what jesus said there is a broad gate and a wide gate many are walking in it and that leads to destruction you see so many are seeing this broad way and that seems to be very right for every person but what does the bible say the end of that way you see the last point of that way is death therefore the destruction with jesus is here speaking is about death therefore you see huh? many people tell no life is very short make it sweet you see it's very short man reaches the point of death very soon this is the way of enjoyment this is the way of selfishness this is the way of selfishness and pleasure you see and who was the one who inaugurated and walked in this broadway if you see it was our first parent and the first man adam adam was the one who walked in this broadway of destruction which leads to death it took him nearly 930 years sir you see to reach his uh, end of death uh, dear brethren you see so it uh, took him 930 years uh, to reach uh, death uh, the ultimate uh, the end of that uh, you see broadway dear brethren and uh, through adam we all know yesterday did in the ransom class at all mankind are walking in that uh, broadway and the broadway you see has become so smooth and so slippery that it took adam 913 years but now mankind is so fast that they walk and cover this way at just in a period of 50 years 60 years 30 years what why why what is the reason for it what is the reason that mankind are walking in the broadway that leads to death you see it is sin okay now what is sin you see we also observed in the meeting in nepal a person asked a pastor asked what is sin you see what is sin what is the definition of sin as per the bible let us read first john 5:17 brother first john 5:17 brother can anybody read brother first john 5:17 all unrighteousness is sin and there is or sin not unto death mm, all unrighteousness everything violating god's law is unrighteousness and that is called as sin okay you see man the first man adam was the one who violated god's command god told him to eat freely of all the you see trees of the tree of knowledge of good and evil but god forbade him to eat one tree you see and uh, uh, he told if you eat the fruit thereof you shall surely die adam violated god's commandment and he ate the fruit and uh, because uh, of the sin what happened death entered into the world so it is because of one man that sin and death came into this world let us read romans 5:12 brother it is given in romans 5:12 Romans 5th chapter 12th verse Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned Very good you see wherefore as a one man by one man sin entered into the world and uh, you see and death uh, because of that sin entered into the world 
and God passed this death penalty upon everybody for all were condemned in Adam. Dear brethren, you see, sin. Now what is sin? Vinjashna saw that any violation of God's commandment is a sin. So take for example, stealing, huh? theft, you see, robbery, all these are sin. Even if you steal a few groundnut, it is sin. Even if you steal an elephant, that is also sin. See, in God's scale of justice, everything is the same. Let the sin be very small. Let the sin be very big. Everything is same in God's sight, dear brethren. And uh, even telling lies, you see, that is also sin. Can we tell lies? No. Because the Bible says that uh, Satan is the father of lies. Let us read John 8.44, brother. John 8.44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lost of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Uh -huh. He is a liar, and he is the father of it. He is the one who invented lies, dear brethren. So, anybody speaking lies, automatically they are the children of the devil okay now if you see huh, in the garden of eden he was the one who spoke the first lie to mother eve and deceived mother eve to eat the forbidden fruit you see and today you know dear brethren mankind today speaks nearly more than 250 lies per day average a mankind you see a man speaks more than 250 lies per day you might wonder whether is it possible to speak 250 lies and it's not at all possible. Yes, uh, you see, you go to any business or any market, anything nice. They'll tell, oh, sir, this is the best product I'm having in the market. I have imported specially for you. These are all lies. If you go to the market, uh, we will uh, ask, uh, what is the cost of uh, onion? He will tell uh, 20 rupees. Then we, what we will tell? Huh? Uh, we will bargain. No, no. How come you are telling 20 rupees? Your neighbor is giving for 15 rupees. Uh, we will negotiate. Uh. That is all lies. Uh. You see, when a mother is feeding the children, you see the small child, what does she tell to the child? Eat, eat, eat the food or else what will happen? Police will come and catch you. That is also lies. Uh. And imagine... You immediately, if you go to some brother and house and uh, they are eating the dinner, they're having the lunch or dinner. Uh, if they invite us for lunch or dinner, immediately what will you tell? No, 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 you have it, please. I just now had, just now finished everything and came. And in case, even if we eat also, uh, even if the food is not so good, what will he tell? Oh, sister, excellent food. Sister, how did you prepare it? Really, it's very delicious. I never had such a food. You see, dear brother, and such type of lies, if you see, man speaks more than 250 lies. These are all leading mankind into the path of sin and death. Today, sinful activities have become so rapid, widespread in the world that the smoking, drinking, these are all considered as a status quo. This is all a dignity in the society. You see, nowadays the parents... Uh, you say, join together with the family and drink. Oi, no status, status of the society. You see, that's a, that means that they're very dignified family. And regarding love and affairs and all, you see, uh, now even as a child is going to the school, you'll be having all this knowledge. Yeah. But uh, in the Bible, uh, they used to have that knowledge in very old days, dear brethren. So, because of this sinful activities, what has happened? Uh, there is a lot of. Uh, you see, death in this world. Therefore, you see, brethren, from Adam till Moses, you see, there was no law at all. And God gave the law to the Moses. Through Moses, God gave the law. And from this broad way, God showed a way to escape to the people of the world. You see, and that was the law. If anybody kept the law, they could have lived perfectly without dying in this world. 
Let us read Leviticus 18.5. Leviticus 18.5, brother. Uh. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgment, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. He shall live by them. If any man keep my status, he shall live. That means there is no chance for a man to die at all. There is no possibility of death at all. So, but the condition was that they have to keep every law, not to break a single law. So law was a way to life, but uh, nobody could achieve the way to life through the law because they were already sinners. You can't tell a sinner to not sin. You see, that was violation of God's law. Therefore, you see, by the law, none could be justified. Let us read Romans 3.20 with that. Romans 3.20. Therefore, by the dates of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. So nobody can be justified. There is no way to escape from Broadway by the law. It was, you see, uh, useless. Therefore, God sent Jesus Christ. If there was a way to escape for mankind from the law, then Jesus came in vain. Read Galatians 2.21. Galatians 2.21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Ah, you see, if righteousness came by the law, if there was a way, you see, of a life by the law, if anybody could have achieved it, then that means the death of Christ was waste. If Christ has died, that is the proof that the law could not, you see, justify anybody. Therefore, God himself opened a new way through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that way is the narrow way. Let us read Hebrews 10.20. Hebrews 10.20. Anu, sister, Romy, sister, can you read? Okay. Anybody else can read? By a new and living way which he had consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. See, a new living way, the narrow way leads to life. That new living way was opened by uh, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how? It says, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. We all remember, you see, when Jesus died on the cross, what happened? Uh, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. What does it signify? So no one was able to actually go into the most holy. But by the death of Jesus, by the sacrifice of his body, by tearing his body, by pouring his blood, you see, the mankind could get access to the Heavenly Father, dear brother, and life giving way was opened only after the death of Jesus Christ. Therefore, what does the Bible say? Enter you into the straight gate. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there be which go in their at. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Now have you ever wondered, now why did God open a narrow way going to life? You see? And uh, opened a broad way going to destruction? Will anybody do that one? Like, for example, imagine uh, if uh, somebody has to prepare an express highway uh, leading to the uh, capital city of our country, will they make a way road as very narrow so that only few can find it? No, dear brother. As many people are traveling on that way, that way will be, you see, very wonderful. 
You see, so they may go, you see, and attain life, isn't it? They may go comfortably and reach their destination. But uh, if you see some village side road and all, how it will be? Uh, it will be a kacha road. It will not be a, you see, perfect road. It will be a narrow way. You see, we full of stones, pebbles, all those things and all. Then, why did God do that one? Why did God open a broad way going to death? And uh, why did he open a small and a very narrow way going to life? So that only few can find it. Why? If you need to understand and seek the answer for this one, you see, dear brother, we need to understand what is the meaning of the life that is mentioned here. We need to see what is this life that narrow way leads to. You see, dear brother, if you see life, you see, in the creation of God, there are various, uh, you see, levels of life. For example, the mankind, mankind, human beings are there, human beings are created on the earthly level, having a fleshly body. You see, dear brother, that is a fleshly level, that is life. There is life, human life is there. But below to human life, there is something called as animal life also. That is also got life, but uh, that is different compared to the human life. Still, if you come lower, there is, uh, you see, plant and trees. Even those things have life. That is a vegetation life. So, these three levels of life also are different, but yet there is only one life. Even similarly, if you go I above human beings, there are angelic nature. So angels also have life. We are read last week, no? The angels are made a little bit uh, higher than human beings. Human beings are made a little bit lower than the angels. So angels are above human beings. That is also life. If you still go higher, there are chief angels, arch angels in the Bible, dear brethren. So Above the angels are archangels, but above all this creation, above all this life, there is one supreme life that is the life of our Almighty God. The life of our, you see, supreme God. You see, the Bible, when it speaks about eternal life, this is speaking about the life which God Himself is having. Like, for example, dear brethren, see, there is sun. When the sunlight falls uh, on various uh, items, uh, you see, various, uh, you see, reflections come into effect. If it falls on a stone or a brick or a rock, uh, you see, it reflects uh, the properties uh, and the capabilities of a rock. But if the same sunlight falls on a tree and plants, it gives forth fruits and vegetables. This one, the stone can't do it. But yet it is light. Similarly, if this sunlight falls on a diamond, the diamond will sparkle like a light itself. It will sparkle like a diamond itself. You see, it will sparkle brighter than the sun itself. Does it mean that the diamond itself is the source of light? No, dear brethren. So similarly, it is only one source of light, but falling on different, you see, particles. Similarly, it is only one source of life that is God. And he has given life to various levels of animals. Dear brethren, when Jesus was speaking in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, that narrow way we used to life, he was speaking about this life, the life which God himself is having, the life above all the life, the life of immortality, the life where death is no possibility at all. And Jesus was the one who first walked on this narrow way and attained this immortal life. Dear brethren, Jesus did not have this immortal life before uh, he came to this earth. Uh, you see, he got this immortal life only after proving his faithfulness to God. Uh, 
you see dear brethren therefore if jesus was immortal think imagine you see how could jesus die on the cross sir you see jesus could not die on the cross at all you see let us read john 5:26 brother john 5:26 for us for as the father hath life in himself so hath he given to the son to have life in himself ah for as the father hath life in himself see father is having life within himself immortal life he is not dependent upon anybody on for life similarly he has given the son to have this life within himself he did not have it he was given the opportunity dear brethren if jesus was immortal how can he die on the cross his death on the cross itself is a proof that jesus was not immortal at all and jesus attained his immortality only after proving his faithfulness to god until death you see let us read the in revelation 118 brother it's given in revelation 118 revelation first chapter 18th verse joel brother can you read brother joel brother revelation 118 i am the i am he that he lived and was dead and behold i am alive for every more amen and have the keys of hell and of death see i am he that liveth and was dead that means he was dead he did not have immortality but now he liveth he is alive for ever more now he is having the immortality dear brethren therefore Jesus to attain this immortality had to prove his faithfulness to God until death on the cross. Yeah, you see, dear brethren, huh? Jesus now is giving this opportunity to attain that immortal life as Jesus attained. You see, to the faithful church, he is giving the same opportunity to us. You see, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Let us read First Peter two twenty one, brother. First Peter two twenty one. For, for even uh, here unto where ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us. and uh, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps ah uh, you see christ uh, left us example that we should follow in his steps so therefore dear brother jesus was the first person to walk in this narrow way and to attain heavenly salvation to attain the life of immortality in the heavenly you see nature in the spirit nature therefore last week we clearly studied no man has attained to heaven that's the reason none of the people in the old testament could not could go to heaven because jesus was the example he was the one who inaugurated that way so without the leader going without the example going how can we go before him to heaven dear brethren so jesus was the first one to walk on it and god has promised the same reward to us dear brethren if we are faithful Let us read a few verses regarding that one. Second uh, Peter one four, then next uh, Romans two seven, then uh, Revelation three twenty one. Whereby are given unto us existing great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the. corpus corpusum that is in the world through lust mm, whereby is given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that you may be partakers of the divine nature god has given us the opportunity to be partakers of the divine nature divine nature means what the nature which god himself is having a nature where there is no death there is no dependent that you need to be on uh, anybody for life uh, there is nothing you need to depend upon to sustain your life it is a life within yourself uh, this opportunity god has given to the church only now only in this gospel age 
Now let us read Romans 2, 2 7. To them whom, who by person continues in well doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. See? Glory, honor, immortality. Who seek immortality? Dear friend, immortality. Those who seek, this is the reward for a church. No possibility of death at all. What is the condition? Revelation 3.21, brother. To him that overcometh will, will that uh, will I gra grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome and am sit down with my father in his throne. Mm. You see, to him that overcometh, if he faithfully overcome, you see, what will be the reward for us? Da? We shall grant to sit with Jesus along with him on the same throne so we need to overcome this is the special reward given for the church the faithful followers of Jesus only those who walk in the footsteps of Jesus and imagine to sit with our Lord along with him on the same throne and rule with him for a thousand years is it so easy no, dear brother, we have to prove our faithfulness uh, till death. Therefore, the narrow way is made narrow. Why? Because the reward is such a reward. It is an immortality. There is no possibility of death. Even if you want to die, you can't die. You see, dear brother, God, even though he has the power to destroy, he won't destroy. Because that is the power of the immortal nature. So therefore, before giving any reward to any person, God wants them first to be thoroughly tested. Hence, this way is made very narrow. You see, very narrow. What does the Bible say? The straight is the gate, narrow is the way. You see, many don't find it. Only few find it. Only few can seek it, and not uh, everybody can completely go and complete it. There are only few people. Therefore, in this narrow way, there will be a lot of trials, a lot of temptations. We need to overcome and fight. What did Jesus say? Revelation 3.21? Even as I have overcome, if you overcome, I will grant you to sit along with me on the same throne. So we need to overcome as Jesus overcome. So therefore, imagine, uh, did uh, Jesus have trials in his life? Yes. So similarly, we will also have trials in his life. We can't, uh, you see, escape and go to heaven on a bit of roses. Read uh, Acts 14.22, brother. Acts 14.22, brother. Confirming the soul of uh, the dis disciples and exhausting them to uh, continue in the faith and that we must through much, through much uh, tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Ah, through much tribulation, we should enter into the kingdom of God. We can't go to the kingdom of God on the bed of roses, uh, comfortable, luxury living. No, no, no. Through much tribulation, underline it. Uh, they should be testing. They should be trials. Uh, they should be chiseling. They should be purification for the church. Uh, then only God can give this reward. Imagine if somebody is uh, studying doctor or engineering, will they get the certificate just like that? Day and night they need to read. They need to sit and read day and night, put a lot of efforts, sacrifice a lot of things. Uh, similarly, read John 16.33 with her. This thing is of unto you, but is that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Uh -huh. What did Jesus say? In this world you shall have tribulation. Not that you might have tribulation. 
you will have tribulation definitely uh, not that you might come it might come don't worry nothing will happen no 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 100% surety you shall have tribulation in this world you see but uh, no need to fear no need to fear at all jesus what did he say be of good cheer i have overcome the world i will help you what did he say i will be with you till the end of this world don't worry but this faith we need to have Read First Corinthians ten thirteen. That First Corinthians ten thirteen. First Corinthians ten thirteen. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted. About that, ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Very good, Anushita. See, no need to worry when temptation comes. This is all common. It should all come for God's children, but God is faithful. As the temptation is coming, as the trials are coming, as the troubles are coming, he will make a way out of all these things, dear brethren. So we need to have faithful. You see, we need to be faithful to God until death. And only those who are going to be faithful to God until their death, you see, only for them, God will give a reward of life, immortal life on the divine nature. And they shall rule with Christ for a thousand years. Read Revelation 26, brother. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Munna brother, can you read? Sorry, Munna sister. Blessed and only is he that hath part in the first resurrection, and such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priest of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Uh -huh. You see, they shall reign with Christ a thousand years. This is the first resurrection, dear brother. The church, the first fruits, uh, they shall rule with Christ for a thousand years. Uh. Therefore, you know, how will they be resurrected? They will be resurrected in a glorious spiritual body. The example for us is given in, you see, Acts of the Apostles, Apostle Paul, when he was on the way to Damascus, he saw Jesus Christ brighter than sun at noonday. And what happened? Uh, his eyes was blinded. Uh. Similarly, the same nature God is going to give to the faithful church. Imagine what a great opportunity. How, huh? Can we ever imagine to be equal with Jesus and sit along with him on his throne and rule for a thousand years? This is the reward for the church. Read for John 3 2. For John 3 2. Anil, brother, can you read? Anil Magar. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and in those of yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Mm, we shall see him as he is. The same reward I is going to give to the church. So, this narrow way is now open. He's still selecting the church. But once the church is completed, this narrow way shall be closed. When it will happen? It will happen at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus returns, he is going to close this narrow way. Then what about the people of the world? You see, many, all the people are walking in this broad way, but only few people are escaped in the narrow way. But all, what about the rest of the world who are walking in this broad way? Is God not uh, made any plan for them? Is there no any plan of salvation? Yes, dear brethren, there should be a plan. Jesus instructed that a man, before building a tower, he need to first sit and calculate the cost. If God himself has advised somebody to sit and calculate the cost and lay the foundation for building a tower, then he himself would have implemented it. Before laying the foundation for this earth, he would have definitely made a plan. He would have counted everything. 
Yes, God made a plan. Yes, God has made a plan. That's what we have been studying so many days. Uh, John 1 9, it says, uh, Jesus is the light that lighteth every man that cometh to the world. First John 4 14, it says, Jesus is the world savior. In John 3 16, we read that God so loved the world that gave his only son. And whosoever believes in him might be saved. Uh, we say in John 1 29, it says, Jesus is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of this world. So then, definitely. Jesus is the light that lighted every man that come into the world means, then definitely there should be a plan of God. What is the plan of God, are you brother? And when Jesus is going to come at the second advent, he's going to close this narrow way and open a highway. Yes, Bible speaks about three ways. A two ways Jesus spoke, but a third way is already given in the Old Testament in Isaiah 35. 8 to 10. Let us read Isaiah 35, 8, brother. Isaiah 35, 8. And an highway shall be there, and an away, and it all, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men the through full shall not err therein. Uh -huh. A highway shall be there. You see, a way which shall be called a way of holiness. Now, the broad way is called as way of destruction. But the highway in the thousand year reign of Christ, it is called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those you see, the wayfaring men, you see, even the fool shall not make a mistake there, it seems. Now, who is the fool in the Bible? Who is called fool in the Bible? Do you know who is a fool in the Bible? Ask for the Bible, who is the fool? Hmm? The one who doesn't believe in God, he is a fool. Read uh, Psalms 14, 1, brother. Psalms 14, 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Uh -huh. See, there is no Earth. God. That's what a fool thinks. There is no God at all. Gnostic. They tell no, people Gnostics who don't believe in God at all. But what does the Bible say? Even these fools, when they come in the resurrection in the thousand years, they won't make a mistake of not believing in God. The highway will be so clear that uh, they will definitely believe in God. Now next, verse 9, Isaiah 35, 9, brother. Uh. No lion shall be there, not any raven, ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Uh -huh. No lion shall be there in the highway. And no raven is beast. You see? Then, what is the meaning of this lion? Who is this lion? We read in the Bible that lion will be there in the Christ kingdom. You know what will lion will do? Isaiah 11 chapter 6 to 9. Kindly somebody read Isaiah 11 chapter 6 to 9. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed. The young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the huh? ox. Hey, yeah. What was the lion shall eat? Uh, what? Uh, mutton, chicken? Straw. Eat what? Straw. Straw. Or, uh, see, the Bible says in thousand years, land will be there. It will eat straw. Like a cow, like a calf. That means 
what all things were there in the first world how oh, in the first world all the animals human beings were vegetarian similarly in christ kingdom everything will be vegetarian but uh, what does the bible say lion also will be there it will also eat vegetarian so little lion will be there but why does uh, i said 359 say that a lion shall be not there the who is this lion who is this lion that shall not be there in the thousand year rule of christ huh? tell me who is our enemy he is compared to a lion no? which is this lion satan very good satan satan shall not be there at all read i first peter 5 8 first peter 5 8 be sober be vigilant because you adversary the devil as a roaring lion walk out about seeking whom he may devour uh -huh. see our adversary is like a roaring lion in thousand years first thing christ will do is that uh, he shall bound satan for a thousand years so lion will do not be there at all okay if lion means satan then what is the meaning of the ravenous beast the ravenous beast dear brethren or the disco club bar cinema wine store tv mobile app facebook twitter all these things is a corrupting mankind as a ferocious beast consume You see, so similarly, these things are consuming mankind. The blinding them, these things and all won't be permitted in Christ Kingdom. Imagine in your Nepal, every store, provision store, there is wine. Will Christ allow when he is the Prime Minister? Will Christ allow when he is the President? No, he will totally shut down all these things. So this beast won't be there in Christ Kingdom. but to whom will this way be it says it shall be for the redeemed ha huh? now continue redeem is a 35 9 and 10 no lion shall be there not any ravenous beast shall go up there on it shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there and the ransomed of the lord shall return and come to zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and singing shall flee away see the ransomed of the lord shall return all the people are dead the ransomed remember the class ransom Jesus gave a ransom for Adam, first Adam, second Adam, ransom. Well, I'll be sending the recording in Kathmandu when we visited. We saw no ransom for all. So Jesus has paid a ransom for all. So all the person will return from the grave. How will they return? With everlasting joy upon their head, the day of the end. You see, today if somebody dies, they will be crying, mourning, everything. But when Christ comes, second coming, uh, He is going to bind Satan for a period of thousand years and resurrect all the dead. Uh, they will be brought back to life again on this earth in the same flesh. Imagine how joy it will be if somebody dies in somebody's house. Can we comfort them? No. You give them how much our money you want, uh, you can't uh, satisfy them. But dear brethren, you see, huh? Eh? you sure the dead person come back to life that is more than sufficient this is what god is going to do in a thousand years dear brethren and sorrow and sighing shall flee away there won't be any tears any sorrow at all all the dead people will come back to life on the same earth again in the same flesh on the same earth they will be living you see this is the everlasting joy dear brethren ha huh? uh read is at 29 18 and 
and in that de cell, the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscuri obscur obscurity, and out of darkness. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murm murmur shall learn doctrine. Mm, you see, what happened in the thousand years? What happened? A deaf will hear. Who is deaf? He that has ears, let him hear. Jesus told no, so many people had the ears, sir. They did not hear. So many people had eyes, but they could not see Jesus and recognize him. In thousand years, when Satan is bound, this uh, eyes and ears of understanding will be opened. And those who murmured and those who did not understand doctrine, the Bible, you see, they shall understand the Bible. Now, if you tell something, what will people do? They will simply argue, they will simply debate. You see, ask unnecessary questions from the Bible. Eh? What does the Bible say? Those who committed mistake now in understanding the Bible will understand the Bible in this kingdom, dear brethren. Therefore, Jesus is given a period of thousand years. Why? To bring mankind from the fallen condition slowly back to Adamic perfection. Hence, a thousand years for Jesus is given to them. Now, how is this uh, highway prepared? You see, you might have observed in your place also. How is the roads prepared? They will first take off all the trees, take out all the boulders, clear all the mud, then uh, make it very flat. Concrete it, uh, put it nice tar and put banner so that everybody can travel fastly. Similarly, it is going to be the express highway in Christ kingdom. You see, read Isaiah 62 10. Isaiah 62 10. Go to, go to the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast off, cast off the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard. For the people. Ah, you see? What do you say? Cast up the highway. How do you prepare the highway? Gather all the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Ah, how do you prepare now? Take off all the stones. Make it very flat. Similarly, God tells to take off all the stones. What is the stone? This stone is not little stone. These are stones of stumbling. You see? Ah, you have no false belief. So many people have the false belief. You see, you, uh, if the cat goes from this side to that side, that side, they will tell bad woman will happen. If a crow comes and touches, you will be unclean. You see, they do all these things, no? I don't, I, I don't know whether they do it in your Nepal or not. Do you have some rituals like this in Nepal? Yes. Mm. All false belief. Huh? All misunderstanding. This is the stone of stumbling. This will be removed in Christ thousand years. It will be so clear that mankind should aram se clearly travel by understanding the truth. The, you see, the banner of truth shall be lifted up. Therefore, the Bible speaks about three ways. You see, the broad way going to death, destruction. Narrow way Going to life, immortal life, and the highway in Christ in the, to eternal life. Okay, so hope you all understood. So I'll be sending uh, the recording, the YouTube link also. Go through it. Any doubts, any clarification, you, you can 